Well, hey ladies, we're continuing in our Proverbs series, and today I have Jordan in the studio. We're gonna talk about Proverbs 16, mm -hmm. which has a lot to do with our words. But before we get into that, I thought it might be fun for us to do a little bit of personal experience with words. So Jordan, share a time that someone's words were encouraging to you or mm -hmm. helped you. Mm -hmm. Well, um, one specific instance comes to mind. So I had a really good friend in college. She was amazing. Um, and she was an incredibly intentional person. Okay. I mean, one of the most intentional people I've ever met. And I was not <laughs> super intentional. Okay. And I had kind of grown up through junior high and high school, just kind of surface level with my friends, never really having good intimate conversations with them. Um, so I become really close with this woman in college. Okay. And after a few months, she lovingly sat me down and she said, hey, you know, I love you and we get along really well, but I have to be honest. Mm. I feel like it can be really hard to connect with you mm. and I feel like you're not very authentic. And, you know, I was kind of like, whoa, what? <laughs> wow. You know, I, I, I was a little taken aback mm -hmm. by that, but I wasn't super defensive because of the way she had approached me about it. And you know, we were really close. Okay. She was like, you know, I really want to work through this with you. And I can tell you kind of even don't really know what that means, which I, which I didn't. I thought that I was a very authentic person. Huh. And so she kind of let me know, you know, you don't really talk about your feelings. You know, we don't even really talk about God. And I claim that God was a big part of my life and never really talked about him. So, wow. so those words that she spoke into my life were really good and you know, a little painful yes. at first, but in the end, super positive and it had a really big, good effect on my life. That's a powerful example. Okay, I'll just briefly just say, I had a science teacher in junior high. I was pretty sarcastic as a kid and I think I said something that made him feel, I maybe made him feel belittled or something, mm -hmm. the way I was in a sarcastic comment in front of a group of kids. And he said the worst thing that could ever be said to me, which was, why can't you be more like your older sister? Mm. And man, those words are like daggers to my heart and yeah. in my development as just a young woman. And so, I mean, I can still remember those words today. Now, thank God, I mean, I moved mm -hmm. through that. But th that, I mean, those words have stuck with me. And that's kind of yeah. our point today. Your example, though it turned out to be good, and because you had a friend that spoke truth and love to you, mm -hmm. I have an example where words were not as kind. But the point is, and that's what we're gonna talk about today, is that our words are important and they oh, yeah. leave a lasting impact. And as we've been doing through this whole series, ladies, I want you to remember that in Proverbs 1, we learn that the fear of the Lord is where true wisdom and knowledge is found. And what we've meant by this this whole time is that we have to elevate God's opinion over our own, mm -hmm. that we need to give God his proper place, that he's truth, he's love, he's just, he knows yep. everything. So we need to let his opinion dictate who we are. And so today we're going to look at Proverbs 16 and we're going to look at God's wisdom in terms of our words. Mm -hmm. Do you want to read Proverbs 16, our passage for today? I would love to. From a wise mind comes wise speech. The words of the wise are persuasive. Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. Scoundrels create trouble. Their words are a destructive blaze. A troublemaker plants seeds of strife. Gossip separates the best of friends. So this is a loaded uh, oh, yeah. couple of verses here, right? <laughs> Talking about yes. words. And that's what we're gonna unpack today, ladies. So let's take a few minutes. The first point we wanna say is that our words have power. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right? We, we either, and through our examples we gave in the beginning, we can either speak life or death into someone's mm -hmm. life based on our words. Yeah. It's interesting how the writer here says kind words are like honey. Mm -hmm. Why do you think Solomon would use honey? Yeah, no, I, I mean, it is very interesting, you know, because he could have said sugar. He could have right. said anything else. But honey is very specific. It is, in fact, better for you. Mm -hmm. um, it can be used many different ways. It can be a balm for your skin. It can help heal your skin. It can help with allergies. You know, it is healthier. It has less fructose. I mean, there are just all these all kinds of nutritional reasons. benefits right. to have honey over sugar. And let's face it, it's delicious. Right. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's about kindness. It adds a sweetness mm -hmm. to life, right? It's oh, soothing yeah. and healing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to the opposite, we see then that the negative things of words are, first of all, from the mouth of a scoundrel. <laughs> I don't know about you, I don't want to be a scoundrel, mm -hmm. that it's like a destructive blaze. I mean, mm -hmm. you think about how fire starts and how it can just consume a house or a forest. Oh, yeah. And that it comes from the mouth of a troublemaker who can divide even the best of friends. Yep. 
So we see that there's a healing element to words, but there's also a destructive force to our words. And so we have to pay attention as women. If God's wisdom is going to lead us, we have to pay attention and know that our words have power, mm -hmm. whether for good or whether for bad. So let's talk about this practically for a few minutes then, Jordan. How do we, how do we go about being wiser with our words? The, the next point is don't react think before you speak. So why is it important to not just react in a moment when we're hurt or upset? Yeah, well, we have to really examine why we want to say what we're going to say. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always a reason you want to react yes. and you have to examine your motives. You know, is it to help that person? Is it right. to hurt them? You know, is it to wound them because they've wounded you? Mm -hmm. That's really got to think about it. Right. Yeah, the, the not reacting, I don't know about you, but when I just say what the first thing that comes to my mind, that's a mistake. Mm -hmm. Re being reactionary is a mistake because oh, yeah. more more times than not, I'm going to be like, I wish I didn't say it that way or mm -hmm. I wish I would have chosen my words differently. So that's why in this practical sense, the don't react and start thinking before you start talking. Mm -hmm. Like you said, really evaluating what's in my heart. What am I feeling? Mm -hmm. Why am I upset? Mm -hmm. What's my motivation for wanting to say something? Oh, yeah. Is oh, it yeah. to help them? Is it to hurt them? Mm -hmm. And we really need to take some time to do that. Look what it says in Psalm 19, 14. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So right there we see the meditation and the words to be honoring to God, right? Mm -hmm. That they would be pleasing to God. So we need to take time to evaluate. Oh, yeah. What would be another thing we need to meditate on, mm -hmm. Jordan, in order to prepare our heart? Yeah, well, if we really want to do what's pleasing to God, I think we should meditate on God's Word. Absolutely. That's how we find out. Absolutely. Yeah, we've got to seek God's wisdom, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. We've got to ask God, how should I view this situation? How should I view myself in mm -hmm. that situation? That's so important. Oh, yeah. Okay, so once we've had some time to think about it and to explore and kind of ruminate on where, where we are in our heart, mm -hmm. then we move to the choose to be productive, not destructive with our words. So mm -hmm. this is where we're actually starting to speak. So Jordan, for you, what do you think it means to be productive? What what should a woman think about? How are words productive? Mm -hmm. Well, I kind of like to break it down a little bit into okay. do's and don'ts, yes. as we've talked about. Um, so I do want my words to add value to that person. Yes. You know? I do want it to uplift them. Right. You know? To be honey, right? Yes, To be exactly. kind and pleasing and soothing, mm -hmm. right? And we do want to speak from a heart of wisdom, right? Oh, yeah. Of God's wisdom in us. That, so the words that we speak are an outflow of what we understand of who we are, how God wants us to be. Yeah. Good. And so then, yes, another do is to add value. So, okay, now these are probably the more likely things women need to think about. What are some of the don'ts? We don't want to be <laughs> critical. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's a big one. <laughs> right. We don't want to be judgmental. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. hard. Yeah. Right? We don't want to be passive aggressive. Yes. That's a big one, you know. Give me an example of passive aggressive. Ooh. Well, um, this one happened recently. Okay. Which is why, why I thought of it earlier. Um, <laughs> okay. You know, if my husband doesn't clean up and he comes home and it's not clean, I might I might slip in a little comment like, I loved how you didn't clean earlier. Mm -hmm. well, okay, so what was what was the what was happening in that moment? Why was that passive aggressive? Because I, well, I wasn't being direct. Okay. I wasn't specifically addressing, you know, hey, you know, I asked you to do this earlier. I you didn't yes. do it. You know, why? You know, kind of leaving him room to say, Oh, hey, let's have a conversation about this. What I did instead was jump in right with an accusation. Yes. And not only that, I did it with emotional charge. Good. You know, I noticed that you right. didn't clean up earlier. I noticed. Right. And so for for Joel then you go on the defensive and he's mm -hmm. probably trying to figure out, wait, is she joking? Like, what are you really yeah, trying to say? Exactly. Yeah. Right. And so those are some of the don'ts we want to do with our words. We don't want to be unclear. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be indirect. We don't want to be passive aggressive and like mm -hmm. couch our frustration or anger in a zinger, but with yep. a joke or like a passing comment. Mm -hmm. Oh, jokes. Yes. Totally. No, we right? cannot. We cannot address serious situations with sarcasm or with jokes. Right. Exactly. So those are a couple of those do's and don'ts that when we're choosing to be productive with our words, we do want to add value. We don't want to be critical and judgmental. We don't want to be passive aggressive. Now, you had three good questions that you mm -hmm. like to ask yourself before you have a conversation with yep. someone. So t share those with us. Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of your basic, but it's why, what, and how. Okay. So when I'm when I'm going to go and talk with someone about something serious or about something you know that I I'm seeking wisdom in and you know meditating on God's word, 
I like to ask, why am I going to have this conversation mm -hmm. with this person? You know, is it is it for a good outcome? You know, is it to help them? Is it to help me? Mm -hmm. Or is it to hurt them? You know, right. because then then I need to step back and really examine, should I even have this conversation right. at all? Right. You know? And then the what, what, what am I going to say? Have, have I been asking other people for wise counsel? Mm -hmm. Have I been seeking God's wisdom and his word? Right. You know, do I want to add value to their life? Like what, what am I going to say? Mm -hmm. Because I cannot go blindly right. into a conversation because especially if emotions are attached, right. it's not going to go well. That's right. And so the last is how, you know, how am I going to do this? Am I going to choose to be direct? You know, am I going to choose to be loving? Is that how I'm going to say it? Or am I going to go in thinking, you know what, I'm going to attack this person right. and they are going to really know that I'm upset about this. Right. Or are we going to have a good God-pleasing conversation? That's fantastic. And I want to read from Ephesians 4.29 to go along with what you just said. Here's what Paul says. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Mm. If our world could live by this, these <laughs> standards, that everything mm -hmm. we say is about being good and helpful and to the encouragement of those who hear them, I mean, what a different world we'd live in. Think oh, about yeah. our marriages, how different our marriages would be if we mm -hmm. chose our words wisely, how we would be as parents when we don't just lash out in anger. So I think, ladies, for us, Proverbs has lots of wisdom, and we could just look at this and be like, oh, okay, words like honey, don't be a destructive force, mm -hmm. and we could kind of pass that off. But really, if we're trying to be women that seek God's wisdom, that we elevate God's opinion even above our own, so mm -hmm. even when we're hurt and we're upset, that we would take the time to think, my words have power. Oh, yeah. That it's better for me to not react, to take some time to evaluate so I know where I'm coming from, why I'm feeling what I'm feeling, how does God want me to view this, how do I want to come across this person, and then be productive with our words and to be thoughtful about how we use our words because, as it says, we want our words to be like honey sweet. Mm. They add value, they have healing elements to them, and not to be destructive and hurtful with our words. So ladies, I hope this was a good thought process for you to kind of go and start thinking about how you use your own words. Use those questions. Talk about this in your small group or with a mentor. Mm -hmm. And let's all grow in using our words to uh, help and encourage those who hear them. Amen.